want to show you the emission lines that are emitted by a hot gas that's not very dense. And so what I have here is a tube of gas. The gas is in this tube. And I'm going to put this tube between two contact points. And I'm going to send an electric current through the gas. That means electrons are going to be passing through the gas, hitting the atoms in that gas, and you'll see what happens. So, right now you're looking again through a diffraction grating, that piece of plastic that breaks up light into its spectrum of colors, and it will show you whatever colors, whatever wavelengths of light this particular gas has. I'll tell you right now, this is hydrogen gas. And so what you're going to see is called the emission spectrum of hydrogen gas, the wavelengths of light that are given off by this hydrogen gas. I have some other gas tubes, I'll show you those also. But first, I have to turn out the lights. And so, I'll be back in a second and we'll get started. There we are. It's nice and dark. And so I'll turn on the electric current that goes through the hydrogen gas and you'll see what colors there are. Well, this is different. When we were looking at the hot filament, you saw a rainbow spectrum of all colors. But now, you see something different. You see only a few colors. You see a red line, and you see sort of a turquoise or bluish line. There are some more lines that lie even closer to the tube of hot gas, but our eyes have a very hard time seeing that, and so those may not be visible. So this is the emission line spectrum of hydrogen. The light you see in the tube is what the blue and hydrogen gas would actually look like, but it's made up of the colors that you see as displayed by the diffraction grating when the light from the tube is broken up into its component colors. So there's hydrogen. Let's take a look at another gas. So let's take a look at this gas. This is another gas. It's not hydrogen. And first of all, you recognize immediately that the pattern of emission lines is different. This is more complicated than hydrogen. And that's because this gas is, has, is made of more complicated atoms than is hydrogen. So I'll tell you that this gas was first discovered by looking at these lines in the spectrum of sunlight. This gas was unknown on Earth. And so they named it after an ancient sun god, Helios. And so this is helium gas. It was discovered by looking at light on the sun that comes to us from the sun. Let's take a look at another gas. And here comes the gas. Wow, there's a lot of red in that gas. It has a very complicated structure. It has some bands in it. And this is neon gas. Now I'll turn off the neon. I have two more to show you.
This is different still. So you should be getting the idea that every element, every kind of gas, has its own unique spectral line fingerprint. And that's how astronomers can tell what elements are found in astronomical objects. Because we can look at the emission lines or the absorption lines from those elements and identify the pattern of the spectral lines. This particular um, gas is something that you're breathing in and out right now. It's the most common element in Earth's atmosphere. This is nitrogen gas. So you're looking at the spectrum of nitrogen. Here comes the last one. Again, the spectrum of this gas is different. And this is mercury vapor. So this is mercury in a gaseous form that's in this tube. And this is the spectrum of mercury. I'm going to turn off the mercury and put the hydrogen back for a moment. So here's the hydrogen again. You may wonder, what causes hydrogen to emit just these certain wavelengths of light, just that red line and just that turquoise or bluish spectral line? Well, it has to do with the atoms themselves. When an electron falls from a higher orbit to a lower orbit, it loses energy. And that energy has to go somewhere and so the atom emits the lost energy as a photon of light. And so a photon of light carries away the energy that the electron loses when it falls from a higher orbit to a lower orbit. The red line that you can see is caused by an electron falling from the third orbit to the second orbit in hydrogen. The turquoise or bluish line is caused by an electron falling from the fourth orbit to the second orbit in hydrogen. And there are other um, spectral lines that you can't see caused by electrons falling from other higher orbits to other lower orbits. And it's the same for every atom. And so, astronomers use this information to identify the elements in the stars. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, and I'll talk to you later.